new architecture by Google is more efficient, trains better and has latent space reasoning that lets the model think before it answers and it can think as much as it needs to. Let's understand mixture of recursions. Large language models are powerful but extremely expensive to train and deploy. The paper addresses this paper addresses three key inefficiencies. Parameter redundancy. Models have billions of unique parameters. We can have superposition where different parameters can uh, hold different kinds of information for different things at the same time. I don't know if they will use that, I just mentioned that. Uniform computation. All tokens receive the same amount of processing regardless of complexity. That's an issue. Memory bottlenecks. Key value caching becomes prohibitively expensive. The solution. Mixture of recursions is a unified framework that tackles all three problems simultaneously. By reusing parameters across multiple recursion steps, parameter efficiency, dynamically assigning different recursions depth to different tokens, adaptive computation, selectively caching KV pairs based on token activity, memory efficiency. As a side note, how much money do I need to spend on to con compute to be able to do a quality research like this? 15 to 30,000 USD uh, in total, but we can optimize kernels, we can use muon optimizer. This can go down to less than 1,000 or even less than 100 or even less than 10. I don't know about 10, but... Core concepts, recursive transformers. Instead of having L unique layers, recursive transformers reuse the same set of parameters multiple times. So in standard transformer, we have different transformer layers, but in recursive transformer, if we have a number of recursions three, we just repeat the same block, same parameters three times. Okay, so that's the main idea. What else do we got? Parameter sharing strategies. The paper explores four uh, strategies with middle cycle performing best. Let's understand that better, so why share parameters? Before diving into strategies, let's understand the fundamental problem and solution. Standard transformer, 12 layers. Layer 100 million parameters, two, three, all same. Total 1.2 billion parameters and shocking face. The solution parameter sharing. Recursive transformer, 12 effective layers, three unique blocks. So we have three blocks, A, B, C, and then we use them multiple times. So total 300 million parameters, but the compute, I guess, is same as this because we just reuse same parameters. They tested four different strategies for this. Let's use a concrete example, building a 12 layer model with three recursions. So we already know, we go cycle one, A, B, C, then cycle two, A, B, C, cycle three, A, B, C, and four. In this code, we see blocks is gonna be just three. That's the number, number of unique blocks, so that's the list of blocks. And then we go in range 12, we just go through these blocks. It's very easy. So this is gonna give us uh, 0, 1, 2, and then we just go Z block 0, 1, 2, then 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, we just go here. The issue here is that there is no specialized layer. So we have 12 layers. All of them are going to be different in standard transformer. But we have three same layers uh, repeating. Then we got middle cycle strategy, protected endpoints. Keep first and last layers unique, cycle only the middle layer. These are the things that are so interesting in machine learning. We just do like these small experiments, it's slow, but now we have coding AI, Claude is gonna speed this up. I'm so excited for machine learning research. In this example, we have first block, which is just a transformer block. Last block is also a transformer block, those are unique. And then we have shared middle blocks, which is gonna be module list of transformer block. So three in this case. And then we pass X through the first layer, and then we cycle some number of times through the middle. So we go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, or so, so 10 times in total. Wherever it cuts, it cuts. And then the last one. Here, first layer can specialize in feature extraction, last layer can also. And then middle layers are gonna save up on a number of parameters. Now I'm wondering, 
why uh, what recursion gives us as opposed to just having those layers uh, different they also tested this uh, each block repeats a a a a a b b b b b may cause vanishing exploding radiance and less diversity here and then combine those two so you have unique in the beginning and a a a b b b c c c and then unique at the end so they show validation loss middle cycle has the lowest validation loss and vanilla full transformer is even lower but that is less efficient it's using more of the actual parameters and then three dynamic routing traditionally each token gets same amount of computation everyone goes through 12 layers but a mixture of recursions is gonna apply number of recursions depending on the dif difficulty so cat two recursions the one recursion mat two recursions and so strategy one expert choice routing each recursion picks uh, which tokens it wants to process so recursion one takes all of them 100 percent recursion two i'll take the hardest 66 percent and then recursion three i'll take only the hardest 33 percent so each of the recursions gets its own router which is just uh, so we create all of the routers to be a module list linear layer going from hidden dimension to one let's see what this one is and the number of recursions time so each recursion gets one router and then we have these capacities so we can have 100 percent 66 and 33 percent auxiliary loss weight for training stability well i'm not sure what this one is this is better explanation expert choice routing works like a series of increasingly selective filters at a talent competition first round everyone participates the judges observe everyone but take notes on who shows promise so we judges the router finds the most difficult tokens round two only those showing sufficient complexity and importance continue and then round three only the most challenging cases that truly need deeper deep processing so uh, router will learn to select these based on loss you know there is loss in the end and then the better the language model performs router will uh, learn to select uh, which 33 percent of tokens to take and as it learns it's going to improve the loss how selection works each recursion level has its own judge router that looks at the current state of all tokens and decides which ones deserve to continue the decision is based on a scoring system where each token receives a score between 0 and 1. The key challenge is that during training, the system can see all tokens at once, like judging a recorded competition, but during actual use, it must work with streaming data, like live judging. I think what this means is, as the model is auto-regressively generating tokens, it's, uh, it just uh, during inference it just sees the ones that exist but during training it sees all the entire uh, sentence even the one because it's training data that's what i understand this creates what's called a causality violation problem solving the causality problem the solution involves training a router to output very clear binary signals essentially pushing scores to be either very close to zero definitely skip or very close to one definitely process this is achieved through an auxiliary training objective that penalizes uncertainty middle ground scores by the end of training the router becomes so decisive that you can use a simple threshold like 0.5 to make selections during inference without needing to see future tokens yeah that's the problem during training it saw future it saw all of the tokens strategy two token choice routing interesting strategies interesting ideas this seems like a fun the only thing is how do i know which kind of research to do which kind of research is best well we are still trying to figure that on my channel the predetermined path approach token choice routing is fundamentally different it's like a sorting head that assigns each student to their house at the beginning determining their entire educational path is this sarcastic or each token upon entering the model immediately declares 
I need exactly n recursions to be properly processed. This decision is final and determines the token's complete journey through the model. The decision process. When a token enters the system, it passes through an initial assessment layer that evaluates its complexity based on the token itself, the surrounding context, the learned patterns from training. Based on this assessment, the token is assigned to one of several expertise levels. Expert 1, tokens uh, needing minimal processing, one recursion, two recursions, three recursions. So that's it. So easy tokens, uh, thinking time, one unit, middle, medium and deep thinking tokens. There is some load balancing, so it doesn't happen that model sends 80% of tokens to expert two. And when they say expert, they don't mean mixture of experts, expert, they mean recursion, as I understand. So there is load balancing loss that penalizes uneven distributions, encouraging the model to spread tokens more evenly across the different depth options. Comparing the two approaches, Expert choice the progressive elimination model. Advantages predictable resource usage. Exactly percentage at every level. Can adapt decisions based on progressive refinement. Natural hierarchy of processing. But requires speaking ahead during training. More complex to implement correctly. Needs auxiliary training techniques, which is not good, I think. And then token choice. Simple one-time decision, no causality violations. Easier to implement and understand, but cannot adjust path once, once chosen. Uh, load balancing is challenging, less flexible than progressive filtering. Example, this is real example, you can check if you want. So it seems like the paper is using gates. So the more complex one, the first one, which uh, with 166 and 33% of the tokens. Then we got this KV cache revolution, the hidden memory innovation. In standard transformer, every layer needs to store key value pairs for all previous tokens during generation. This creates a memory nightmare. 1000 tokens, 12 layers, 12,000 units of both key and value vectors. So MOR has strategy one, recursion wise caching. Think of it like a hierarchical filling systems where only active documents stay on your desk. How it works? Only tokens that are actively being processed at each recursion depth get their KV pairs cached at that level. The insight. If a token exists after recursion 1, why keep space for its non-existent recursion 2 and 3 values? So they only cache like 66 or 33% based on the recursion. And the second method, just reuse recursion 1 key and query for everything. Sorry, uh, key and value. Compute KV pairs only at recursion 1. Recursions 2 and 3 reuse the same KV pairs. Only queries change at uh, each recursion depth. Then we have a different scaling laws discovery. Traditional scaling laws suggest a specific balance between model size and training data. Mixture of recursions breaks these laws in a fascinating way. Traditional scaling, double model size or double training data for equal improvement. Mixture of recursion scaling, prefer larger models with less data, which seems good because we don't have no data anymore. Why this happens? Mixture of recursions share parameters create a different optimization landscape. Quality over quantity, since the same parameters are reused, making them better matters more than seeing more data. Depth multiplication effect. Improving one share block improves multiple layers simultaneously. Interesting. Recursive refinement. Each parameter update affects multiple passes, amplifying the impact of parameter quality. Each parameter affects multiple recursions, yeah. The practical implication. If you have a fixed compute budget, uh, traditional 1B model trained on 100 billion tokens, Mixture of recursions optimal 3 billion model, that is uh, 1 billion unique parameters trained on 50 billion tokens. Interesting, so you got just 1 billion and 50 billion and here you had 
1 billion, 100 billion. Latent reasoning, the hidden thinking process. Then we got this discovery, latent reasoning. So recursion depth is thinking in latent space. Traditional models, think out loud, generate tokens. MOR, think internally, recursive processing, then speak. They analyzed router and find the, the evidence of thinking. So if you have difficult technical terms, they get more recursions. I swear this is something we can do in YouTube tutorial. This is not even like too difficult research. End of sentence, few words, uh, variable recursion depending on complexity of the sentence ending. Punctuation, minimal uh, recursion, mostly synthetic. They also have some GPU tricks to parallelize batches, I guess. And this uh, GPU trick yields two times throughput increase at maximum efficiency. A near 100% GPU utilization versus 60 to 70 traditional. Because in traditional, uh, when one sequence finishes, GPU needs to wait for something, I'm not sure. Automatic load balancing across sequences. And uh, five, there is test time scaling. So the model will just uh, put tokens through more recursions if it's harder. So how the model learns? Phase one, chaos, epochs one to tw 20. Random routing decisions, no clear patterns, performance worse than vanilla transformers. Then these epochs have some pattern discovery. It all starts to work. Uh, phase 3 specialization. So I guess they're going 50 times over same data. I thought language models are gonna just have one epoch. You don't go over same data. And then refinement epochs 100 plus. Critical finding. Routing patterns must be learned during pre-training. Post hoc routing. Adding routers after training. Degrades performance by 15 to 20%. Explaining why previous early exit methods struggled. Check out other videos on my channel and see you next time.